Welcome back, everyone, to another episode of Hockey's Tonight. On today's podcast, I'm joined by sophomore from the UMass Lowell hockey team, Owen Cole. Uh, thank you so much for coming on the podcast, Owen, and how's everything going? Yeah, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, things are pretty good. Done class for the week, so um, looking forward to the weekend. Yeah, and obviously your team started off the season in the right way, beating St. Lawrence 4 to nothing. Um, How important was that win for yourself and for your team to start off the season on the right note? Yeah, I think that win was uh, really big for us. Um, we got a lot of new guys into the game, and I think it was just important to get our confidence up for the year. Um, it was a pretty good win. We had a great goaltending performance. Um, so got a lot of guys that got their feet wet, and then just kind of getting the, the brains and legs back to game form. There's nothing quite like playing a game. So as much as you train, there's, until you play that game, it takes a little bit to get back into it. So I think playing out a conference opponent especially is good just for a little more exposure and also just to get those legs back and brains back before we get into hockey East action. Yeah. And obviously you have a non-conference series coming up this weekend. How, how are you looking forward to playing Miami and what's your expectations, I guess, for this series and how do you think it's going to prepare you when hockey's play starts up in a few weeks for you guys? Yeah. Uh, I'm excited for this series this weekend. Um, playing an NCHC team and they've been uh, pretty good in the last few years. So uh, I think it's kind of big for hockey East looking at a uh, hockey East versus a NCHC team. Uh, so I'm expecting a really good series this weekend. Um, I'm really excited. I know all the guys are really excited for it. Um, so, yeah, not, I mean, we've done a lot of preparation. I'm sure they've done quite a bit as well. So I'm just looking forward to uh, getting on the ice tomorrow. Now, coming into this season, like, what are your goals and expectations for your team and then for yourself as well? Yeah, uh, I think the goals for the team are obviously to uh, win Hockey East and get back to uh, competing for a national championship. Um, last year didn't end exactly how we wanted it to. Um, we thought we had a very good team and came up uh, short in, uh, against both uh, UMass Amherst and then Denver. So, Ultimately, it's just getting back to winning the Hockey East Championship and competing for a national title. And then personally, um, this year, it's really just about uh, having a bigger role. Um, coming as a freshman, you're just doing whatever you can to get in the lineup. So this year, um, while still fighting to be in the lineup every night with the competition we have every day in practice and the very good players on our team, it's just about having a bigger impact in every game and doing something that's going to help the team win every night. And I think just trying to be a leader. Um, I'm pretty vocal. Um, so I think something I can help out a lot every night is just talking on the bench, keeping guys spirits up and making sure nobody gets too high or too low. Now talk about your off season a little bit. How did you prepare for this upcoming season and what do you think is the biggest improvement you've made to your game so far? Yeah, uh, I took a little time off after last year. It was uh, definitely a different season than playing junior and, uh, pretty taxing. So it took a little bit of time off and it was, it was nice to be home for a little bit in the summer. Um, but I think uh, really this off season, I just got to improve confidence um, to make plays. A lot of last year was uh, more so trying to get it to older guys as quick as I could or more skilled guys as quick as I could just so that I didn't mess up. But I think this year I'm a lot more confident in the plays I'm able to make. And uh, then just speed and skating has always got to improve. You always got to get faster. Um, so I did a lot of work with uh, Tom Ford too, some power skating and um, just really being more efficient with my skating and making sure that I'm getting all the speed I can. And how important is it for you to take some time away from hockey? Because I've talked to some other players before and they like to do it as well, just to take their mind off just the season and try to focus on other things. Do you think that's important for you to kind of to take that time off during the off season just to reset your mind? Yeah, I think for the mind and the body, um, through a season, it's just if you even think about every game day, you're at the rink. Uh, maybe you got a meeting in the morning, and then really you're at the rink from uh, 4:30 p.m. till 10:30 p.m. And that whole time, you're you're pretty dialed in. So your mind's taxed, your body's taxed, and um, so I think when you get the chance to take a little bit of time off, it's really important just to reset. Any you might have an injury you don't even know about, and you find out about it at the end of the year. And, little things that you got to fix up and not be always on hockey mode, maybe spend a little more time with the family and uh, maybe a little more time in the classroom as well. So I think taking a little bit of time off of hockey is actually very important. 
and can help you a lot going into your next season. Now, what did you do, I guess, during the offseason, non-hockey-wise? Anything fun, or was it kind of just relaxing? Uh, nothing too crazy. Uh, just when I got home, I uh, spent a lot of time with my family. Um, I've got a niece that turned uh, one year old this summer, so that was pretty exciting. Try to get as much time with her as I could when I was home, and um, try to just see my family, my girlfriend, as much as I could, because um, we're here pretty much from August 31st until mid-May, uh, even Christmas, we're only about 10 days at home. So trying to get as much time as you can with family is uh, really important for me and um, didn't really do anything spectacular in the summer, a couple like weekends away just with a couple of friends, but um, nothing too noteworthy. Now I want to transition and talk about the beginning of your hockey career and kind of work all the way up to where you are today with UMass Lowell. So you're from Ontario. How did you start playing hockey and falling in love with the sport? Yeah, uh, my dad is was really into hockey. He played uh, university hockey in Canada uh, while getting his degree at Waterloo. So um, he wasn't going to force me to play, but he put me on skates in the backyard, probably around three years old. And, um, we had a little pond back there and he was always making sure it was ready to go. Um, so I think that was uh, what really started me. And I didn't really like hockey at first um, when I started the, the tight power skating that we have in Canada, um, especially my hometown, I was always crying. And my dad just said like, stay out there. And thank God that he did, because I don't know what I'd be doing right now if that hadn't happened. But uh, from there, I moved out of my, my hometown hockey, um, Pretty early, I think when I was eight years old, I started playing AAA, which was uh, in Welland, Ontario, which is uh, about 30 minutes away. Uh, and I played on that team all the way from eight to 16 in minor midget. Um, we had a name change in there. We changed the Southern Tier Admirals, but not very significant. Just kind of put a couple of teams together. And um, yeah, I had a lot of good teammates. Um, just coming up through that. And then I got, uh, I got drafted to the Oshawa generals, uh, late in that OHL draft. Um, and I was lucky enough to get the opportunity to play at Ridley college in St. Catharines, Ontario. And, uh, so I decided that was probably the, the next move for me. Um, and, uh, so I really just thought that Ridley was a good spot for me. I kind of decided at that time that I thought I wanted to go to college more than, uh, major junior and my dad was a fan of that route as well as well as my mom just um, getting the education is a very important part my whole family um, really ha holds education very high so um, we kind of thought that was probably the best with the way that um, I treated school and my body and different things like that um, so Ridley College is a really good place for me to get into the school aspect it was a uh, very a very grueling school work like much like a university schedule which was good and the hockey was a, there was a lot of hockey a lot of training so that stepping stone really made a big difference um in my ability to jump into junior a after and in my ability to handle school and hockey when i got to umass lowell yeah, and who was your favorite player growing up? Was it someone on the Maple Leafs or was it another player, another NHL team? Yeah, so my uh, my OG favorite player was uh, Matt Sundin on the Maple Leafs. Um, I was a Maple Leafs fan for a little bit there, so I really liked him. But as he was starting to uh, decline a little bit and retire, I uh, jumped on the, the Crosby wagon. And um, I there's not uh, much you can deny about how good he is and ultimate competitor, ultimate team player and leader. So um, my whole life, I've always been a Crosby fan. I'm not a, a true Pittsburgh Penguins fan, but I always want them to to win and go go far in the playoffs and win more cups just because I think Crosby's the, the greatest player ever. So, um, and then I try to try to model my, name, my game more like uh, Jonathan Taze, not that I'm up to his skill level, but uh, – just the way he plays 200 feet and is trusted in all situations and uh, known as such a great leader. I always try to, to be a lot like him. 
Yes, I kind of root for Crosby as well, just because I feel like he only has like four or five years left before he might retire. So you never know how long he might have. So you kind of have to appreciate that greatness before it leaves. Yeah, exactly. And he's still playing at such a high level too, uh, which is probably the craziest part about it all. So I think, uh, yeah, I'd like to see that trio in Pittsburgh at least get one more. Now, before college, you mentioned that you played for Ridley, and then you went on to play for the Ottawa Junior Senators and the CCHL, uh, where you helped them winning win a CJHL National Championship in 2019. Uh, talk about your experience there, and what was it like for you? Yeah, so so we made it to Nationals. We didn't uh, actually win. Uh, Brooks won that year. Um, but it was awesome. Uh, really coming out of prep school, I didn't know where I was going to play. Uh, it was kind of coming down to a last minute decision and uh, Ottawa gave me a chance. They were losing 12 forwards from the year before they'd just gone on a national championship run and uh, lost in the semis. So I figured that's a good spot to get an opportunity right away. And they gave me that opportunity. Um, so really I'm forever grateful. I had that opportunity to play there and things uh, really worked out well there. I think the coaching styles, um, how things were run just really, really went well with how I am as a player and a person. Um, so yeah, that first year was incredible. We, we really had things come together quickly and the guys that were brought in um, as rookies and trade traded for were all uh, impact guys right away. And um, so that was uh, rather surprising. I would say, I don't think many people would have picked us to do that well at the start of the year. Most people were looking at Carlton Place to be that team to come out of the CCHL. But uh, we had an exceptional season. And then our goalie, uh, Francis Balver, he's actually on St. Lawrence. He had uh, an exceptional um, playoffs. He was uh, CCHL MVP of the playoffs, I'm pretty sure. He was the uh, national championship tournament MVP, despite us losing in the semifinals. Um, so... I think we just got hot at the right time and we really, we really did everything we could to go up against a couple of really good teams in Brooks, uh, Prince George, uh, Oakville and uh, Portage. Um, but ultimately we fell a little bit short, 4-3 to Brooks in the semis. And speaking of Brooks, you did get the chance to play with the Brooks Bandits in the AJHL in your final year uh, in junior hockey. Uh, what was that experience like for you? And what led you, I guess, to switch teams and go, go to Alberta? Yeah, I was looking for um, a little bit more. I felt that uh, in some ways my time in the CCHL had maybe come to an end. I just knew too much what was going on in there. Guys knew me too much. It was nice to kind of get out and play in a different league. And Brooks obviously is known for having so many, um, a lot of commits on their team. And they're just incredible player development. So. I was uh, really excited to be traded out there and Ottawa didn't know what the state of their season was going to be yet with uh, all the COVID protocols and things were not seeming, um, it wasn't seeming too confident that they were going to get to play. So I uh, asked to be traded um, and I got sent out to Brooks and that was uh, a really incredible experience for me. They were playing, already playing when I had got there, they were doing exhibition games. So I was a little bit behind to start, um, but uh, like Pat Ryan Papuana, the head coach, uh, I flew out there and I got off the plane and instantly played in the game. Um, he didn't want to waste any time. I said, oh, maybe I'll like watch the first night. And he said, no, like you're going to go. We want you playing. Um, so he just threw me right into the fire, which was really good for me. Um, and then we got shut down, though. That was the unfortunate part with all the COVID protocols. Um, we got shut down in November and uh, we said, well, we're probably not playing a game till after Christmas. So most guys headed home uh, for an early Christmas break. And I stayed out there with uh, the Americans, mostly on the team. And I just continued to train um, and skate in the rink. We were allowed to have uh, three on one sessions. So there could be four people on the ice and three players, one coach. So we would go out there and that was really big for my skill development too, with the time I missed at the start of the year, just, uh, really breaking down I have videos on my phone, breaking down my stride and getting a little more explosive with uh, our assistant coach. Um, so that was a really good time for me and just skating all the time at night. It's so cold there and uh, my billets 
we're living on the lake. So we'd hop on the lake and, um, really that was a good time for me just to add a lot of skills to my game. And, um, it was really just integral to my advancement to college. I don't know how I would have done coming straight out of Ottawa here, but Brooks, I felt was so professional, so prepared and really helped me make that jump to college. And talk a little bit about your recruitment process to college. What made UMass Lowell the school for you? And uh, talk about like why you chose to go to Hockey East. Uh, yeah, so actually kind of interesting was I, Lowell was kind of on my radar anyway because of uh, Charlie Levesque went to uh, Ridley College as well. Um, not the same time. He's a couple years older than me, but um, we watched them play a couple times when we were at Ridley and we were in tournaments down in Boston, we'd catch a Lowell game just to see him play. Um, so they were always kind of on my radar. And when they reached out and I was in Ottawa, um, obviously I was very intrigued right away, hockey school. Um, so when we uh, organized a tour, so I, after um, Team Canada East, I uh, came out for a tour and really it was impossible to say no once you get in the rink. Um, you see all the facilities and the way that the team plays. Um, I think right away I knew when the game started and it was Christmas break, but there was still, I think the band was still playing. There was still a great attendance. And I pretty much knew right then that I wanted to be here as a matter of uh, talking to my parents about it. So um, yeah, my tour was amazing. The gym was amazing. Um, kind of a gym rat. And when I saw that, I, I saw the gym, I wanted to work out on my tour. I was like, this is awesome. Um, so I, I pretty much knew right away, this is where I wanted to play. And the style they play is more of a 200 foot game, not run and gun offense. And that compliments me. I'm not a run and gun guy. And I'm, I'm I like to think I'm a 200 foot player. So yeah, as soon as I, as soon as I came out here, I pretty much knew like, this is the place for me. And as long as my parents were good with it, then this is where I was going to be. And talk about the, the biggest adjustment you had to make to college hockey. Was it the speed of the game, the physicality, or was it just the confidence that you mentioned at the beginning of this interview? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, a big thing would be the confidence, but also just the speed and strength of players. I mean, if you look at our captain last year, Lucas Condata, he's 6'3", 215, and um, I'm coming in at 5'10", 175, and like I always thought I was pretty strong, fit guy, but then I got in the gym and he's lifting the gym. There's like not enough weights in the gym for him. It seemed like, um, and on the ice, just the speed out there was insane and guys being able to move you from the front of the net very easily. So I think that was the biggest adjustment was really just, okay, we got to really kick it in gear here. We got to get faster. We got to any way we can get a little bit bigger. We got to do it, gain some weight. Um, and then with just being a little bit bigger and stronger came some more confidence but it definitely started with the the speed and strength aspect. And talk about what it's like playing under <clears throat> Coach Norm Bays in. Um, in my opinion, Lowell has been probably the most consistent team in Hockey East, and a big reason for that is because of Coach Bays in and the type of guys that he brings into the program. Uh, what's it been like playing under him, and what have you learned under him so far? Yeah, um, I think the way that uh, our whole coaching staff scouts is a lot about people first and then the player. So I think that definitely helps us a lot in the way that we compete. Um, Norm Bezin is, oh, he's a great coach. Um, I think he is um, incredibly knowledgeable about the game of hockey. Um, the way he plans for every game um, with uh, Andy Jones as well. The way that we go into every game with a plan is uh, quite incredible. And they, they know how to motivate us, especially Norm. It seems like his pregame speeches are never really the same but he always finds the right words to say that are going to get us excited before a game and ready to run through a wall. Um, so I just think like, he's just so smart. And then he's hard on us in practice. Our practices are um, very high tempo. Um, and even though he's hard on us, he knows kind of what makes everybody tick. He can tell a difference between what I need versus what a new guy needs or an older guy needs. Um, and then ultimately he takes that and boosts your confidence at some point throughout 
throughout the week, throughout the month, whatever it may be. But he's actually made me a much more confident hockey player, even though at the start I was very nervous around him, uh, very nervous on the ice, thinking about what he's thinking. And now it's more of a, I know he believes in me. He shows every guy in the team he believes in them. And he really allows you to just be confident out there and play your game, which is what's going to make us the best team is when every guy is confident and predictable. Now, last year, your team had the chance to play at the TD Garden for a hockey championship. Even though it didn't go your team's way, I have to ask what that experience was like for you getting the chance to play at the Garden. Yeah, that was uh, that was really cool. Obviously, it sucked that we didn't get the result we wanted. Um, but the support we had from the school was incredible. We actually they gave us, uh, I think, three sections of seats for our school and three sections for um, Amherst. And we got, we had to get another three sections. We had that many students saying, we wanna get on the train, get to TD Garden and watch, uh, which is really awesome. Um, just shows how much our school is behind us. And it was really neat to be on NHL ice for sure. Um, the crowd was awesome. Um, it <laughs> It's kind of bittersweet though, just with the way it, it ended, um, we still, right till last second we still thought we had the chance to win and we thought that we might win so um it's kind of tough to look back at um, especially with the belief we had in in each other and as a team um so we're definitely looking to get back there and prove ourselves and uh hopefully the uh the roles will be reversed next year and we can be hockey's champions and you also got to play in the national tournament as well as your team lost to the eventual national champion, Denver Pioneers. Uh, what was that experience like for you getting the chance to play at the national tournament? And I guess, how'd you bounce back from the hockey's uh, semifinal loss uh, to have a pretty good performance, in my opinion, against Denver? Because obviously I remember in the hockey semifinals, a fluky goal went in and that kind of gave UMass kind of the, the sales to get, have, have a good third period and what ultimately closed that game. So I was just curious from your perspective, how you bounced back from that and how you and your just whole experience playing in the national tournament as well. Yeah, I think the the part that helped us bounce back so well was our leadership, uh, starting with Condotta and then uh, Stephenson McDonald. Um, I think that really helped us just move on from it. It was unlucky. Uh, one of the goals that we gave up, nothing you can do to change it. Um, so. I think that really allowed us just to move on from it. A Sodergren as well as someone I should mention just <clears throat> and saves our goalie, just guys saying, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't really matter. Like we got a, we got a new goal now just because we're not hockey champions doesn't mean we can't be national champions. Um, so I think we, we bounced back really well the next day at practice. It was back to competing hard, um, just doing a little things right. And how are we going to beat Denver? Um, and we had a plan. We did whatever we could. Um, so that, that whole experience is pretty neat. Uh, just going out there. I've never been out uh, to Colorado before. Um, so it was pretty neat to, to play there, kind of experience the, uh, the altitude difference. I didn't know what that was going to be like, which was a little bit of an adjustment. But that's why we went there a couple of days early. And, yeah, um, even the game, it's the same thing as the Amherst game. I our whole team still believed we were going to win. Um, I think that's something that makes our program so strong is the belief we have in each other and um, what our game plan is. So that was, uh, that was a tough one to swallow because same thing they scored with, I think uh, maybe four and a half, five minutes left. Um, again, kind of uh, some call it luck, some call it skilled tip um, on a two on one. And uh, we just couldn't, couldn't quite come back from it, but it was, I, I think we all left the game disappointed in the result, but proud of how we competed and the type of effort we put in against a team that ended up being a national champion, um, which is also bittersweet to see them win because you think, oh, well, we lost to the best team, but also, well, we were that close. We lost by a goal. We had a very, very tight game with them. So overall, the experience is very good, something we can bring into this season and know um, what kind of team we have, what kind of resilience we have. And uh, again, hopefully we're on the other side of the result. Yeah. What was like the biggest thing you learned your freshman year that you're taking in uh, for this year? 
it goes back to confidence in my abilities. Um, I've said it a couple times now. It's just, I think a lot of times as, as a freshman, and I tried to relay this to uh, the freshmen this year, um, you just need, everybody's here for a reason. You, you don't get to go to a division one school to play hockey if you're not a good hockey player. That just doesn't happen. That's the whole reason that you're scouted to go to the school is because you're a good hockey player. So you need to be confident in what you're doing. Um, that's, it just makes such a big difference when you can play free and not be so worried about what might happen, but instead just say, Hey, I'm going to make this play and it's going to go right. And the confidence is just, it's just, I can't even describe how important it is, especially in my game. Um, and then I, it also took me a little bit to get a balance between school and hockey. Um, as mentioned before, like my family is pretty academic. Um, so my sisters are very smart. I felt a little bit of pressure to do well in school. And I think I took school um, a little too seriously at some points last year where I probably should have been getting maybe rest for hockey instead of um, doing extra homework or things like that. So I think I needed to find the balance of how much school do I really need to do? How much hockey do I really need to do? Um, when should I get off the ice instead of making myself actually more tired for practice the next day? When should I get off and let my body rest a little bit? So I think finding that healthy balance um, and what makes uh, myself successful was really important. And obviously your team has a few new players uh, this year. Talk a little bit about them and what they've brought to the team because you lost some key players like Owen Savory, Andre Lee, and Lucas Condata, just to name a few. So um, just talk about the, what the new players bring to the team and what it's been like being their teammates so far. Yeah, I think ultimately what we brought in was uh, size, speed, more competition and character. Um, as kind of a whole, our freshman class is um, bigger than what my class was last year, both in terms of number of players and the physical size of them. Um, and I think they're all brought in as uh, ide low identity players. Um, that's what, how we recruit older players and uh, guys that are re like pretty good skaters and uh, play the body, finish plays. Um, so I think as, as a class, they're all very good and are going to have big impacts on our team, uh, both this year and in the years to come. And then the transfers that we have, um, well, F Philip Forrest Fenson, um, he's a real big boy. Um, he can really shoot a puck and um, he's an awesome guy to have around as well. Um, Stella came over from AIC. Um, I think the best word to, to describe him is tenacious. Um, he's all over pucks and um, more leadership in the room. And then Goose um, came from Alaska. And I mean, you saw what he did this past weekend against St. Lawrence. Um, every time we had a breakdown, he was there. He made the play that we needed. Um, so hoping to see more of the same um, from that perspective of him and his leadership too. Obviously, he was a captain as a goalie at Alaska last year. Um, so I think uh, all our additions are very good for the team and um, our coaching staff did an excellent job to make our team uh, better in the off season. Now, what game are you excited for the most <clears throat> when you look at the upcoming schedule? Is it traveling up to Ireland or is it the Michigan State Series that's coming up uh, this month? Because that's something that caught my eye looking at your schedule. Yeah, uh, Michigan State will be fun for sure, but um, I think the biggest thing is going to Ireland. I think that's just so cool that we get to head over there and um, just compete over there, see another side of the world. I've never been outside of North America. Um, so I would say that game, but also um, getting back to the Garden. Don't know when that will be and who will be against this year, but um, – that was special last year, as we already previously discussed, and that's the place we want to be back at. So, um, yeah, don't know who it's going to be yet or when, but I, that's the game that I really want. Now, last question for you is what's the best thing about being a UMass little hockey player? Yeah, um, that was one that I thought was going to be kind of hard to answer. There's so many, so many great things about being a UMass little hockey player um, and student, but um I was thinking about how well we're treated here and I mean, the great facilities, um, but ultimately it's just the guys in the room. Um, 
the coaching staff, the relationships you have with the guys and the coaching staff. Um, it's pretty loud at our rink all the time. There's guys bickering back and forth, having fun with each other. Um, so I think that's probably the just the best thing is going to the rink and you're always happy. You get to the rink and someone's joking with you about that or um, someone's lifting you up about something that happened. Um, really, we have a special group of guys and it's pretty exciting uh, when you're that good of friends off the ice as well because it can only mean things are going to get better on the ice. Um, and then finally, we just we have a great support system. Our whole school, as discussed with the TD Garden game last year, the whole school is behind us. Um, walking on campus, we'll have people asking us about different things going on. And uh, like I had someone in my class ask me who's going to start this weekend. I said, oh, I don't know. Like, got to wait and see uh, who earns it in practice this week. So I think the support we have from the whole school is pretty cool too. And we have a pretty rowdy uh, student section. And um, so there's a lot of things that make playing here special. It's just a, a really enjoyable place to play. Um, and I think just the way that we earn it every day makes it that much better. Now, is there any shout outs you want to give to any of your family members, friends, former teammates, current teammates? I try to mention some people throughout the interview that you might've wanted to talk about, but if there's anyone I forgot to mention, feel free to shout them out. No, I, th I think uh, probably hit it all pretty well. Um, this weekend, I'm lucky my uh, my parents and my grandmother are heading down, and um, they're obviously my my biggest fans. So I'm pretty excited to see them, and, um, and it means a lot, everything that they've done for me throughout my uh, hockey career to even get to uh, Division I. Um, so I'm excited to see them and uh, continue to uh, play hockey at the best of my ability. and uh probably just coaches i mean every coach throughout has a stamp on something they taught you something they helped you with so um that's probably it i don't really have any more shout outs but uh yeah thanks for uh, having me on yeah thank you so much owen for coming on the podcast i really appreciate your time and i wish you nothing but the best uh moving forward this season i know you and your team are going to do great and i uh, can't wait to hopefully i'll see you at the garden come march yeah i'll see you there for sure